We've got cars heading out onto the circuit already for the second race of the day uh, for the Classic and Modern Motorsport Club Intermarks series. They gave us a very interesting race uh, earlier on in the afternoon, uh, just after the lunch break it was, and uh, I'm expecting more of the same now. Had a, a few drivers though that ran into mechanical issues in that race, and I'm hoping that they've got their car sorted because it could have been an even more competitive race, I think. Certainly, uh, pole sitter Lewis Smith retiring with a mechanical issue was unforeseen. We also lost Eric Bolton, who had uh, front-running potential. So we'll see how many of those guys have got out there uh, for the second race, which also handily features a partially reversed grid. So uh, we will get some of the quicker drivers having a bit more work to do to get through the order. Uh, Philip Young will end up on pole position then in his number 21 uh, Mitsubishi. And looking out of the window, and indeed on screen, I can see the white number 24 car of Lewis Smith is there. Eric Bolton is there as well, and 267 John Price too. So I think we are missing maybe Simon Hutt, number 7. But that's uh, possibly the only one that's uh, absent from the back of the grid. Right, let's take a look at how the grid should line up, and we'll uh, piece together who is or isn't there in a moment or two. Philip Young in the Mitsubishi Colt on pole position. Mick Robertson alongside him. Colin Smith and Daniel Hun on row two. Steve Burrows and Mike, uh, Malcolm Blackman on the third row of the grid. Now, they were third and second, respectively, in the previous race behind Daniel Smith, the winner, who has to start seventh this time. Uh, eighth place for Volker Tim in the Audi TT. Nigel Beardsmore, Beardsmore and Lewis Smith on the fifth row. So Lewis Smith, the number 10 car, is the one to keep an eye on here. He had pole position by a good margin in race one, but instantly ran into some sort of mechanical issue. He starts 10th this time ahead of other non-finishers. Simon Hutt, well, he might not be there, in the BMW Z4. Eric Bolton, the Vauxhall Tigra, and John Price, his Tigra, at the back of the field. So, the classic and modern motorsport club intermark series then ready to go racing here and uh, slightly depleted field for their second race but we should still get some good action here particularly in the early stages reverse grid races are always fun especially when that race is only 15 minutes if you're buried in the field you don't have a lot of time here to get on with it and uh, get moving up through the order also an opportunity for some of the drivers that struggled a bit in the earlier race to have their moment in the spotlight. We saw some good racing involving Daniel Hun, though, in the uh, Ford Fiesta, the yellow and red car that starts fourth on the grid. So he's going to be a tough one to find a way past, even for those front runners from the previous race. So the RunYourFleet.com safety car becomes the RunYourFleet.com pace car for a lap as it paces the field on the green flag lap. Round two of the CMMC Intermarks series. It's still a nice, mild, sunny day here at uh, Silverstone on the international circuit. We've had uh, been blessed with the weather, really, this weekend. Uh, only in the middle of March. I've, uh, uh, I've covered meetings uh, in the middle of March before at Silverstone, and it's not been anything like this pleasant. So uh, this is uh, definitely... Nice way to start the motorsport season for many of us here at Silverstone. It's the start of the season. First boat racing action experienced in 2022. A brilliant offering we've had from the RSCC over the course of the two days. So, who's going to win this one then? Well, it's not that easy to predict. You would have to say either Daniel Smith Malcolm Blackman or Steve Burrows unless Lewis Smith's car is now back at 100% health if it is he should have the speed to win he was a second nearly quicker uh, than anyone else in qualifying this morning but we saw so little of him in the first race we don't really know what his race pace was going to be like literally he accelerated away at the start and immediately was overhauled by the whole pack so although he sold it on for a couple of laps he didn't manage to uh, get particularly far in the race, retiring at the end of lap number four. There he is, Lewis Smith, number 24. And, uh, starting the race from 10th on the grid. I wonder where he'll be at the end of the first lap this time. Will he go forwards or will he slip backwards again? Mitsubishi on pole position now of Philip Young. Mick Robertson alongside him on that front row of the grid. Uh, except he's not because Mick Robertson has got his hand out of the window and is slowing. So the VW Corrado in trouble, I'm afraid, uh, before the race even gets underway. And he's going to drop right to the back of the pack. He didn't pit, uh, but that's probably because there was too much traffic in the way. So uh, whether or not he's able to get up to speed at the start of the race, we shall have to wait and see. That means that alone on the front row of the grid is Philip Young in the Mitsubishi. 
and Colin Smith and Daniel Hunt there in the yellow Ford on row number two. The red lights are on, they go out now. Good start made there from behind Daniel Hunt by Malcolm Blackman in the red Vauxhall Tigra. And he's going to be challenging for a good position into the first quarter. In fact, he's going to get the lead. Is Malcolm Blackman in this contact? And that's Lewis Smith. Lewis Smith around. Hood is off as well. And there's another one of the Mercedes off to the inside of the road. That's number 59, Nigel Beardsmore. And for the second race in a row, Lewis Smith is out of contention by the time they get to the first quarter. Although this time, not due to a mechanical failure at all. He has rejoined, but whether there's damage to that Mercedes, I'm not too sure. Blackman got a brilliant start to get the lead of the race. Second place for Burroughs. And who came out of all of that in third? Oh, well, it's, uh, it's Daniel Smith. So it's the same top three we had in race one, just in a slightly different order with Blackman in front. Uh, Blackman was the one of, that spent the least amount of time in the lead of those three in uh, race number one. The Corrado, weirdly, is up to speed again. Hook diving up the inside of the 267 uh, of John Price. So don't really know... Uh, why that car was uh, slowing on the green flag lap but it seems to have good speed again now and uh, oh, well I say it got past the 267 car of John Price John did try and uh, fight back again going into club but just locking up and running straight on so uh, that is the Ford off of Daniel Hun surely they well yes they are going to move that with the live snatch then okay um Drivers running a bit wide there through the first corner. Going to get that out of the way before the cars bear down on Abbey Corner at full speed again. Through Village goes Malcolm Blackman then. He is your race leader. Second place for Burroughs. Third, Daniel Smith. Fourth uh, is the Mitsubishi Colton pole sitter, uh, Philip Young. And Blackman runs wide at Chapel and hands the lead back to Burroughs. And now Daniel Smith gets a run on the pair of them. Remember that dynamic from the first race where it seemed like the Tigras struggled in the first sector, particularly Malcolm Blackman seemed to struggle in that first sector, but then they were a bit quicker than the Mercedes of Daniel Smith through the second half of the lap. Is that going to be the same way that it works now? Daniel Smith is staying with them nicely there through Stowe Corner, so I would say no, that's not the way it's going to be. Blackman really struggling when he's following another car. That seems to be what's going on here. Oh, too late on the brakes into club. He makes the corner just, but... Uh, not the ideal racing line and so Daniel Smith all over it now as they come out of club corner there's the fight for fourth position Young versus Smith and um, Colin Smith trying to find a way past as they come across the start finish line it was also side by side for third but of course a yellow flag at turn number one now did Smith get that move made on Philip Young before they got to Abbey Corner not quite sure the yellow flag of course is actually there a little bit uh, before the Corner, and I'm not quite sure whether he actually had the full overlap by that point. We'll see if anything's done about that. Eric Bolton, by the way, uh, no, sorry, Lewis Smith just set the fastest lap of the race. So that obviously Lewis Smith's car is okay. He's 7.1 seconds off the lead in seventh position, but that white number 24 car might still have a chance of this if he can. He's in at 1 minute 12.3, four seconds quicker than the race leader. I'd imagine yellow flags had something to do with that. Uh, but Lewis Smith rocketing on and here he comes look around the outside of the Corrado of Robertson and the Tigra of um, Eric Bolton that is so Lewis Smith now into sixth position runs a bit wide but he is on a mission I'd like to have a look at the right hand side of that car see how badly damaged it may or may not be uh, looks all right actually so although he took a fair whack on the right rear corner at turn one it doesn't look to be too badly damaged it was Eric Bolton now on the inside he's been sort of following Smith through the pack does the same again there, getting past Robertson in the Corrado. So next target for Lewis Smith is the Mitsubishi Colt of Philip Young, the red machine. He should be able to dispatch of him fairly quickly. It's another fastest lap that for Smith, 1 minute 12.3, that time only a tenth quicker than the race leader then. So the cap stays at seven seconds. He's already got past Young's, uh, um, Young's uh, Mitsubishi. He's there goes the Blackman and Smith squabble for second position. Blackman second, Smith third. And look at the way that they've been dropped here by Steve Burrows. Burrows really making this race his own at the moment. Oh, that is uh, another off uh, at the top end of the circuit for Colin Smith in the Silver Tigra. He was running fourth, so that's another place gained by Lewis Smith then, because he was the next car that Lewis had to overtake. So it makes it a little bit easier for the man who's been the fastest here so far this weekend at Silverstone. Oh, wow. Blackman and Smith both on the limit of adhesion there as they went down uh, into Club Corner. Steve 
Burrow's fastest lap of the race now, 1 minute 11.354. Is Lewis Smith going to be able to beat that or not? Let's wait and see. He's going to be the next car across the line in fourth. The answer is no, 111.7. As here, Daniel Smith tries to get to the outside of Malcolm Blackman and just about finds a, a silhouette-sized gap. He puts on the outside into Village. The more they race each other, the more they delay each other, and the more they maybe allow Lewis Smith to close in. Oh, Daniel Smith goes through. How did he do that? He was completely out of shape, out of village. Obviously carried so much more corner speed that he just drove alongside Malcolm Blackman. Got the inside through the link and off he goes. So, 2.7 seconds of the gap to the race leader. Can he do it? He's got uh, over half the race to go. If Daniel Smith has got any pace in hand, now is the time to show it because that's uh, not going to be easy to do. And of course, he wants to do it, ideally, before Lewis Smith gets onto his tail because Lewis Smith is coming, no doubt about it. Catching this group pretty rapidly. On the previous lap, he was nearly a full second quicker than Malcolm Blackman. There he is, look, the white Mercedes turns through the corner. And the 24 car that did not have an ideal start to the season in race one is really being thrown around this Silverstone International Circuit. Lewis Smith will not be happy if he leaves Silverstone without even a podium come the end of the day. A 1 minute 10.8 is a new fastest lap. It's two tenths quicker than the leader, but more to the point, it's 1.8 seconds faster than Daniel Smith in second place. Into the pit lane goes John Price in the uh, Tigra. No, not to, uh, Tom Price, sorry, Colin Smith, 491. It's a shame for him. Out of the race, having finished fourth in the previous one, fifth in the previous one. But, uh, out of the race on this occasion. So, Steve Burrows leads the way. And is not being caught by Daniel Smith because he was one and a half seconds faster than him on the last lap. So, Burrows for the win, I would say, is not a certainty, but it certainly looks good. It's the order of those behind that is in question. They've separated now, but uh, Lewis Smith is quicker than Malcolm Blackburn. Within a lap or so, we'll be on the tail of the third place car. We are not even quite halfway through the way Lewis Smith is throwing that Mercedes SLK silhouette through the final corner is a sight to behold. 111.3 for Smith, 111.6 for Blackman, 110.7 for Lewis Smith. Another new fastest lap of the race. Six and a half seconds off the lead. About quarters of a second faster on that lap. He's not going to have enough laps to get the lead, I don't think. I think Steve Burrows, as long as he doesn't have any problems or make any mistakes, should be far enough up the road. But these two are definitely vulnerable here. Lewis Smith, with a bit between his teeth, is going to be on their tail, possibly, by the end of this lap. And the hanger straight again for this, the seventh lap of the race. got 13 laps in, in the early one, but of course uh, there was, was there a safety car in that first race? It might have been one of them just for a lap. So if this stays green, they might get an extra lap or so for their 15 minutes. Through the club, over the curb, Smith. <laughs> oh wow, Lewis Smith, that's not really the, uh, the line that they recommend you take through club corner he's definitely exceeding track limits but uh, so far i haven't actually heard of anyone being penalized for track limits we had uh, i think a warning yesterday in one of the races but no penalties were given out time was that you wouldn't have a single race on a silverstone event that wasn't plagued with track limits infringements drivers generally learning their lesson and i think uh, being policed slightly differently through that final sector. Either way, Lewis Smith is, is running right to the extreme edges of the circuit that he's entitled to use. And it's working because he's on the tail now of uh, Martin Blackman in third position. And to Stowe, the Tigra seems good in a straight line, doesn't it? The cars are all the same, but the bodies, uh, the, the silhouettes that they use can be aerodynamically different. You've also got that big rear wing on the back of the cars and you can see just to the eye the Tigra's rear wing looks a bit skinnier than the Mercedes doesn't it? You can see it's a flat top to that wing whereas the Mercedes is quite big and bulky and probably generating more downforce but also generating more drag uh, down the straights. So that would maybe explain why 
Louis Smith is not as quick as the Tigra of Blackman down the straight. Also note that Daniel Smith's Mercedes has a different shaped rear wing to Lewis Smith. He's got, again, a skinnier, lower downforce rear wing on that car. Oh, Smith, though, using that extra bit of downforce to good effect under braking there. Nips up the inside of Malcolm Blackman at Village. Did he make the move stick? No, but now he does down into Chapel Corner. Hits the kerb, slides his way through. Job done. Onto the podium for Lewis Smith. And now he's got just under five minutes to try and chase after Daniel and get second place. Unless, of course, Malcolm Blackman can come back at him. He's quicker down the straight. He's got a slipstream as well down towards Stoke Corner. He's forced to go the long way round. But that won't bother him too much. He'll give it a go. Yeah, it looks as though Lewis is going to be able to hang on there on the inside just. It's a bit wide on the exit, but Malcolm Blackman, although he draws level, is going to have a hard job going around the outside of Lewis through club. Oh, Smith sideways. I thought he lost it then. I've seen him drifting that car at all sorts of crazy angles, but I thought he might have taken it a step too far there. Now, can he shake off Malcolm Blackman at the moment? This battle is really holding him up, isn't it? 111.9 for the race leader, a 112.5 for Lewis Smith, who's got Blackman to the outside again at Abbey. Keeps hold of it. Malcolm Blackman really ought to just stay there behind Lewis and see if they can both get back on turns with Daniel Smith but uh, he's not doing that clearly the slick tyres on these cars really being given a work over and uh, the rears especially seem to be crying enough on uh, Lewis Smith's car I'm not surprised really all of the power slides he's been uh, displaying over the course of this race there's the battle between the Corrado and the Mitsubishi briefly Uh, makes its way out onto the hangar straight once again. No change in the order imminent for the time being. They're back to the third place squabble. Alvin Blackman still asking all the right questions here of Lewis Smith. And because of that, I think Lewis's chances of getting second away from Daniel Smith are deteriorating by the corner here. Let's see what the lap times are this time. An 11.40 for Smith, a 12.0, six tenths slower for Lewis. So, uh, yeah, as long as he's got Blackman weaving around behind him, Lewis Smith isn't able to concentrate on chasing after second place. That helps, though. Blackman went for a move into Abbey that was never going to work and uh, ends up being quite a bit slower through the corner as a result. So now as they will head on to the hang straight this time, for the first time since he took that third place, I think Lewis Smith will be able to focus all of his attention up the road rather than looking in his mirrors to try and fend off the attack from the Red Tigra. Malcolm Blackman down the... And the straight for the 11th time. Two and a quarter minutes still to go in this final race of the weekend for the Intermark Series. The Classic and Modern Motorsport Club, though, have another race to come from their Super Saloons and their Tin Tops. And here is the Mick Robertson Philip Young battle. They've been pretty much inseparable all weekend long. They both qualified initially on the fourth row for race one, less than a tenth of a second between their qualifying times. Then, then, of course, started, or should have started, on the front row of this race. I don't know what happened to uh, Mick Robertson on the green flag lap, whether he just elected to start from the back of the grid. In the end, that was probably sensible, because uh, it meant that he missed the first corner collision and uh, was able to just pick his way through it all. And now here he is, running in a, a very, very strong sixth position, having just taken it away from Young on this lap. Now, looks to be easing away from him, if anything. The ultimate lap of the race for the race leader, though Steve Burrows, 6.7 seconds up the road. He's had it easy in this one. Uh, I don't think we're going to see much change behind either, because Daniel Smith just pulled out a personal best lap there, 1 minute 11.2. It was two tenths slower than Lewis Smith, but he's still two and a half seconds ahead, so I reckon this might be the order in which they get the flag in a lap's time, but uh, I've seen enough of these intermark races to know that uh, they're never over until they're over. Mechanical failure always seems to be just around the corner. And because they're just such difficult cars to drive when you're on the limit, the stakes are also quite easy to make. And that's why it's worth keeping the pressure on the opponents at all times. You never know. And an opportunity might arise to pick up one more position before the flag. But a good drive this from Lewis Smith, though. A, a real shame he got turned around in the first corner because you'd have to say without that, he probably would have been up there fighting Steve Burrows for the victory. And Steve might not have had quite the Sunday afternoon drive that he's had. He's 
able to coast really through this second half of the race in particular. Not that it looks like he's coasting, still pushing on through uh, Chapel Corner. Doesn't make friends with the apex, but still manages to uh, carry good speed onto the hangar straight. He's got a lapped car ahead. It's the Mercedes of uh, Nigel Beardsmore, I think, number 59. He's the last car running. Three cars out of the race, of course. Uh, one non-starter in uh, Simon Hutt. Daniel Hun out of the first corner. We also lost um, Colin Smith to the pit lane. This Vauxhall Tigra of Steve Burrows is going to have a pretty strong day, having finished uh, third in the race earlier on today. He's going to lead most of the laps in race number two to win the second round of the Classic and Modern Motorsport Club Intermark Series. Check and flag goes out to Steve Burrows uh, with a pretty healthy winning margin in the end over Daniel Smith, who comes home in second place. The driver of the race, though, no doubt about it. After spinning at the first corner, Lewis Smith gets himself back onto the podium in third. Malcolm Blackman in fourth. Fifth position for Eric Bolton. Here he comes. And then sixth place should go to Mick Robertson. But he's had this pretty close race-long duel with Philip Young's Mitsubishi. And yeah, look, the Mitsubishi's back. Oh, no contact at the last corner. Oh, and they're both in the gravel. Young was back ahead of Robertson at that point, and Robertson tried a do-or-die manoeuvre into the last turn. They collide, and into the gravel he goes. Looks like Philip Young will carry on, but Mick Robertson is not going to see the flag. There goes the Mitsubishi across the line in sixth. Oh, that's a shame. They've had some good battling today, those two. A shame that it all ended in tears at the final corner. Robertson's retirement will mean that John Price inherits seventh place he comes across the line now just ahead of Volker Tim uh, in the Audi TT a dramatic end to the race then not for this man Steve Burrows everything went to plan for him there got to the lead early on uh, got past Malcolm Blackman who was the early race leader despite having started sixth on the grid Blackman led into turn one but Burrows was able to get past him pretty early on in the race really and then just drove away winning margin of 5.4 seconds it could easily have been a bit more than that he backed off quite a bit there towards the end uh, of the race. So, entertaining stuff from the Intermark series. We look forward to having them back uh, on the BRSCC bill throughout the season. And uh, Steve Burrows gets himself a nice start to the season here with uh, a solid pair of results. Podium in race one, top of the podium in uh, race number two. And uh, when they get back around to the pit lane, which they do right on cue, uh, we'll be able to and over to Jake Sanson and have a word with the three of them. You can see them there uh, pulling into the pit lane. Before we do hand down to Jake, though, let's take a look at the race results. Steve Burrows, the race winner. Daniel Smith, second. Lewis Smith recovers to third after a trying day. Malcolm Blackman, fourth. Eric Bolton, fifth. And sixth place for Philip Young. John Price was seventh ahead of Volker Tim and Nigel Beardsmore. And that's it, unfortunately. Mick Robertson was a non-finisher after that dramatic last lap clash uh, with Philip Young. Colin Smith also failed to finish. And Daniel Hun, of course, off at the very first corner. Average speed, 94.26 miles an hour for Lewis Smith. They are the fastest cars, I think, um, racing on the bill this weekend. Right, let's head down to the pit lane then, where Jack Sanson is ready to chat to our top three. Well, that certainly makes up for race one. Steve Burrows is going to work his way out of his beautiful machine. And uh, we're going to get a very, very happy Steve Burrows after the frustration of race one. Let's help him out a little bit. That's more like it, Steve. That's what we came to expect from you. Race two was much better. That was good. Yeah, I enjoyed that, boy. Yeah, it's good. So nice. what were the issues in race one that kind of held you at bay? Um, we had a real close race in, in race one. Um, a lot of respect between all three of us. Um, and we just backed out a few things and had a good time to put a show on, you know, which was great. And uh, yeah, this time we managed to get a good bit clear and uh, away we went. Looks like it could be a very strong season from CMMC and you've got, you know, your Intermark absolutely on point. It looks good, it goes quick. So is this a championship campaign starting up here? Uh, we're having a go. It's not a championship, you know, because we're not doing a championship. But uh, yeah, I want to be consistent, if you mean. Be good. Come away with some nice silverware anyway. Yeah, mate, yeah. There you go. Good lad. Great Lovely. job. Great race. Thanks very much. Excellent. That's more like it from Steve Burrows. Come over here again and have a look at Dan Smith's machine. It's done it again, look. That is an oven. That's absolutely crazy. I'm going to have a quick word with Dan. Well, what is it still the same problem again occurring? Well, yeah, I think it's, it's something on the front seal of the gearbox which is leaking. 
Um, I think I don't know about the diff because that was leaking in the last race as well. But hopefully that might have sorted itself. But we'll we'll look in a minute, find out. So, but um, yeah, a bit of a struggle, but we got there. So. The car slowly being held together by uh, cable ties and hope. <laughs> well, it was it's all mechanically there. It's just you lose a lot of grip when you get oil going on the wheels. But um, to be honest, like I said, the tires they're never great at the end of the race anyway because they're, they're too hot. So, but yeah, good fun. Fair enough. Well, I'll let you push your car in. I wouldn't ask you to get back in it and drive it down the pit lane again. You might get some sort of what, carbon monoxide poisoning. Keep it going, but great job. Well done. well done. Thank you. Perfect. Excellent. The first and the second for Dan Smith. He was very lucky to get to the end of the race. The most pristine looking sideways intermark you're ever going to come across. This man was pushing it like Colin McRae at various points. I saw that cheeky little run out of the veil. It was absolutely on full chat and opposite lock. We'll have a natter with him uh, in a moment. Let's have a, a quick chat. Lewis Smith, or should I call you Colin McRae now? Because there were some moments when you were proper four-wheel lock. Yeah, we was, um, we was thrashing the nuts off it, basically. Um, but it was just unfortunate that mix-up at the start. I don't know what happened. I was on the outside um, and was taken out. But this happens. Luckily, we didn't get no damage and we carried on. Um, but, yeah, it was a few hairy moments when we was going through the pack, um, just pushing the car so hard to get, get through, really. Driving a bit quicker on the red mist, or was it just the car was always capable of that? Uh, probably a bit of both, I would say. <laughs> I was I just we've had no luck all day, and I just I thought it would be nice to get a good race finish today. Um, and then that happened on the first corner, and I thought, oh, just we've got to go on a charge now. So that's what happened. Well, you've got a little bit of a breather now until Mallory Park. Is it still going to be strong there? Do you reckon? Uh, we'll have to wait and see until we get there. Really, um, as I was saying to your colleague, we'll be, I'll be back in my own car then. Um, so yeah, we just we'll have to wait and see. Good stuff, great performance all the weekend. Well done. Thank you very much. So uh, what a fantastic performance we've had from the classic and modern motorsport clubs Intermarks. They really have given us great entertainment. But there's more Mazdas on the way. Andy McEwen will talk us through the grid once more. Are you ready, mate? I definitely am. Yes, the Mazda MX-5 Super Cup. Then the uh, not the final MX-5 action uh, today because we've got the Clubman Championship coming up. A little bit later on as well uh, but yes the mx5 super cup set to uh, provide i'm sure another really entertaining 20 minute race the two that we've had so far this weekend have been absolutely fantastic and i'm sure that the one coming up in a moment or two is going to be no exception our thanks though to the intermark drivers really enjoyed having them here at silverstone as jake said they're out at mallory park uh, in a few weeks time and we look forward to checking in with them as we move through the season